Hello and welcome to Ryan Make, where we explore and make new things. Now, vibration has been something that has fascinated me for a very long time. And in particular, the area of cymatics, which is the interaction of vibration or sound with the physical world, creating visual phenomenon through resonant frequencies. So, so far on this channel, I've made two different Rubens tubes, a fire flexible Rubens tube and a smoke Rubens tube or a fog Rubens tube. Guides are on my Instructables page in the link below. But these only work in one dimension. But there is a other apparatus, the Cladney plate, that works in two dimensions. And I've been wanting to make one for quite some time. The guide for how I made mine is in the Instructable link below. Now I have seen many ways that people have made Cladney plates. Uh, driving them in different ways. From violin bows, to modified speakers, to specially designed drivers. I'm using an acoustic exciter, which is kind of like the heart of a speaker, but without going all Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom on it. Let me show you what it looks like without the plate on so you can get a better idea of what it looks like. If you want more details, head to my Instructables page. So while I've seen Cladney plates use dust or powders or all sorts of things to show their resonant phenomenon, the cymatic frequencies, I have yet to see oobleck. Now oobleck is a very interesting material. It's a very simple mixture of just water and cornstarch. But once they're together in the proper proportions, it forms something called a non-Newtonian fluid. Now what, what is that? A non-Newtonian fluid is something that acts kind of in contradiction with traditional Newtonian mechanics. So what makes oobleck a non-Newtonian fluid? Well, when there is very little force used against it, it's very fluid. It flows very easily. It can flow right through my fingers. But the moment I start to squeeze it or punch it or mix it or apply kinetic energy to it, it becomes much firmer. It actually becomes more like a solid, which is really interesting. So instead of it giving way to force, it resists the force. That's why I think this is going to be a really interesting demonstration on the Cladney plate to see if we can more or less get a negative picture compared to the powder with the oobleck. But first, we gotta make sure that this thing works with powder. So now that we have our Cladney plate built up, as you can see, it's time to test it to see what kind of resonant frequencies we can find or what the visual phenomena are at different resonant frequencies. Just running it through a couple of different frequencies, you get some pretty stunning patterns. Just have a look, I mean, it's, constantly changing. Now I know I'm showing only a few different patterns of the powder, but trust me, I played with this for hours and I plan on having this set up a few more times in the future because it's just so much fun to see the variation in the patterns and shifting from pattern to pattern. What happens if we move from powder to a non-Newtonian fluid like oobleck? I mean, this is something I've never seen before and I've been wanting to see it after one of my friends made the suggestion. But now, let's pour this oobleck on this plate and see what happens. So you can see in the back left corner of the Cladney plate, there are some mounds and valleys forming. This distortion you can see particularly from how the light is reflected slightly differently. But let's look at another angle to see what it looks like where at a slightly higher frequency, we see smaller mounds where, just like how we saw with the powder, it's small circles spaced at defined distances. I mean, this, while not as clear as the powder, is still really fascinating. Well, the visual effect of the oobleck was far less striking than the powder. Uh, the contrast was far lower, much like how the fog tube had a lower visual affect than the fire tube. But sometimes that's just how visual phenomena work, or maybe we just need more power. If you like this video, I'd ask that you give it a thumbs up. If you have ideas for this video or feedback, then please leave it for me in the comments. Or if you have other video ideas, I'd love to hear about them in the comments as well. That's where I can hopefully start getting some project ideas. If you like videos like this, or the videos I have on my channel, then I ask that you subscribe to me here on YouTube at Ryan Make and also on my Instructables page at Ryan Make. But until next time, I'll be figuring it out. Thanks.